Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over some classes, everything you need to know to get up and running, how to use different techniques to build out your code, whatever you're doing, side projects or whatnot. So let's jump into it and we'll create a new folder. We'll call this classes and then we'll create a new file in here, call it person.rb. So in here, let's get something set up so that we can test all of our code. Actually, you know what? Let's create a new file that is gonna be test RB. And in here, we'll write that test code. So here we'll call uh, just everything we need. So person new, and we'll assign this to a variable. And then let's say we're gonna create a say hello method on a person. If we did that, we could do this. And what this is doing is creating a new instance of the class, which we're gonna create over here in our person.rb file. So let's create that. Create the say hello method. Have it say, you know, like, hello, I am a, and then do person. And then we'll end this. All right, so we can add the require relative and do person. And from there, we should have our person. And if we run it, then we see, hello, I'm a person, which is what we see right here. So let's split this over to the right. And we have our runner on the left hand side and then our class on the right hand side. So let's go over this real quick. So this new method is calling a constructor, which we haven't defined here on the person class. Say hello is a public method. And so we create a new instance of a person. And then from there, we can call this method. If we tried to do person dot say hello, then this would blow up on us. And we can see that here. It's going to say undefined method for person class on line five. So that's exactly what we don't have right now. If we wanted to implement that, we would say self before the name of the method. And we could do say hello and say hello. I am a class method. And if we did that, then we would no longer have our compile failure. Let's do a runner. And there we go. So this first one is our instance method where we're calling the say hello on an object. The second one is our class method that we're calling there. Um, let's say that we wanted to make this a little smarter. And so we could do just output whatever the actual class underneath is. And if we did self.class.name, then if we ran back over here to our code runner, then we get the same output. And so if we change the name of the class, then it would be reflected in that name. If we wanted to have a private method to have, you know, this longer piece of code extracted, then we would do a private designation here and say, you know, like get class. And we could copy out this, call the get class method, put this information here. And then if we ran our code again, this should give us the same output. And so if you have a lot of functionality that you need to pull out into other helper methods, and you don't really want them to be called external of your class, this is a really good way to do that. So you have these private methods, and you can pull out all kinds of stuff. You can actually even have a class defined in here and do all kinds of different things, but we won't get into that right now. So now let's create another class that is going to inherit from our person. So this is going to talk about inheritance. So let's say we have a musician, musician, and it's a best practice here to name the file with whatever the class name is to match. So musician, and that's going to inherit from person. And if we do this, 
then let's override the say hello method and do say hello and do actually before we do this let's just run it and create a new musician so musician dot new and if we do musician dot say hello which we get from inheriting from this person class and if we run it uh, it doesn't like it because we need to bring that in as well. Let's bring that in. And so it says, hello, I'm a musician. And we can see that we have not implemented any code inside of this class, but we get it for free because of the say hello method. So inheritance is good for specialization, like. You can be a person, but more specifically, you can be a musician. And so if we wanted to enhance this a little bit and actually override, you know, let's say as a musician, if I say hello, then I can call super, which is actually gonna call this say hello method in the person class. But let's say I also wanna say how many songs I know and say, I also know 11 songs. If we do that and we run our code over here in the runner, then we can see we also get this output from the musician based on this hello method. And we can say however many songs they know. Now let's go to constructors. And so right now we have just the default uh, constructor but if we wanted to inject let's say like how many songs a different musician knows so if we did initialize which is how we define our constructor in Ruby and we'll pass in like songs known and we'll just default it to 11 because that's what we put here and then songs known is going to be songs known and we have to create this thing. And so let's create an adder accessor, which gives you a get and set method uh, by default, which is nice to have. So this will give you those two methods and also initialize this so that you can see exactly how many songs a musician knows. Let's use that value here and do songs known. And then if we were to come over here, we should see that same output. And we do. So let's create another musician and we'll put a little divider here and we'll do other musician, musician.new. And this one knows, let's say five songs. And if they say hello, then we should see that they only know five songs. Uh, but we don't see that. We have a bug in our code here somewhere. Oh, I see. <laughs> we needed to have other musician, not the first one. So let's run that again. And we get five songs, which is what we expect. Now, if we try to assert that both of these musicians are the same, then it's going to tell us that they are not the same. Which this is doing a object equality. And so it's just checking out like, you know, what these two instances are. If we want to have our own way of saying whether a musician is the same, then we could check to see that both of these, even if the songs is 11, so they're still not equal. But if we wanted to say that if they both know the same amount of songs, then they're equivalent musicians. Let's create our own equals method. And we'll have to pass in other, which is gonna be the other instance. And we'll say if, you know, the songs known on our class, 
is equal to the other musician's songs known, then we'll return true. And we need to alias the equals just so that we, let me check my notes. Yeah, we need to do this. And now if we run our code, we'll see that these musicians are equivalent, which is what we want. Another thing to note is if we're overwriting the equals or how equality is determined, we should also override hash, which is how, let's do hash here. Hash is whenever things are compared in a map. And so to figure out, you know, how to search those keys very quickly, then this function is used. And so if we're gonna override equals, we also wanna override hash. So that's just to keep note, nothing should change in our functionality and we're good. So let's see if we had another class, let's say we had a juggler. So I wanna show you another way to do inheritance. Let's do a juggler.rb and this juggler will also inherit from person, but they're gonna have what's called a module and it's gonna be the talent of juggling. And so they can say hello, or I'm sorry, this needs to go into the juggler class and it'll call super. So it's gonna call the person uh, say hello method. And then we're gonna put juggle and this is gonna be defined in this class. And it's gonna return a string, say, I know how to juggle. And so to inherit that behavior, you do include juggling. Let's indent that a little bit. There we go. So if we had a new juggler, and a new juggler not say hello, then we should see that it will call the say hello method on person and then also say that they know how to juggle. And doesn't like our juggler. Let's include that. Run this again. This may give us a little bit better output. No errors. And we see that, hello, I'm a juggler, just calling this get class on the say hello. And then I know how to juggle, which is exactly what we wanna see. So let's say that we didn't wanna use inheritance. We didn't wanna use modules. Instead, we wanted to delegate. So like as a musician, maybe you have like a talent pair. So if we enhanced our musician class, and we'll have another divider here. So uh, talent pair musician. And this is gonna be a new musician. And we wanna pass in how many songs they know. So let's say this one's, this person's really talented, they know 20 songs. And then let's pass in other talent that can be in their, in their show. So let's say like a new juggler. And so if we say talent musician, say hello, then what would be cool is if this juggler also said hello as well. So if we run this, it's gonna fail on us because we haven't implemented this behavior. Uh, if I run it right, go. Yeah, wrong number of arguments in our musician. So let's go here. Let's enhance this to say other talent and we don't want that to be accessed anywhere else so we'll trim this down to be private make just a get method because we're not going to be changing it and other talent from there we will say other talent and then 
once we have that, oh, we have to say it's equal. We can, when we say hello, loop over that and do other talent dot each and then talent talent dot say hello. And if we do that, let's put an output this to the screen. So this should say hello from the musician and then loop over all the other talent to then put uh, say hello out from that juggler that we injected in. And so what this is called is dependency injection or delegation to other classes. And this gives us a lot more flexibility. Let's run this and we see that. So we say, hey, I'm a musician. I know 20 songs and then the other talent, which is the juggler, and they know how to juggle as well. So, hey, we have a very talented pair of individuals and they can do all kinds of different shows. The other thing I wanted to cover is if we didn't want to allow inheritance. So let's say in the person class, we didn't want um, anyone to inherit from this class. So we'd say uh, not allowed. And this is getting into what's called an abstract base class. So if we, if it didn't make sense, you know, you're just a person, you need to have some sort of a talent or job to do, then we can restrict this from happening. So if we run this, it should give us an error over here when we're trying to set this up. So this will prevent us from creating a new object, which is over here. So let's comment these out because those don't work anymore. And we'll run this and we still see it on line 21, which is good because we are reusing that initialize method. So this is going to provoke us to implement our own version of the constructor. In here, we don't really care very much about any other setup. And then in the musician, we've already implemented that initialize method. So we should be good. We run this again. We don't see any errors, which is great. All right, that's everything that I wanted to cover for today. If you learned something, then please like and subscribe to the video and I'll see y'all next time. Thanks.